Hello, this is Winters. Uh, today I'm making a channel announcement about a new show coming to Winters SEO called Deployment Zone. And in this video, I'm going to take you through uh, what Deployment Zone is, why I'm bothering to launch a new show on the channel, and uh, ramble along quite a bit so you can listen to me while you're painting. And also, I'm going to uh, do the first Deployment Zone video. So what is Deployment Zone, I hear you ask? Well, good question. Deployment Zone is an idea that came to my fevered, grim, dark brain when I thought about showing off some of the pretty models, some of the uh, units and um, stuff that is gonna be hitting my deployment zone in the near future. See what I did there? So these guys I painted up recently and uh, in future battle reports, you're gonna see them in my deployment zone. Deployment zone. So this is a Tactica series where you get to hear my thoughts in quite some detail on some of the new units that are gonna be appearing in the battle reports in the future. Uh, it's also a way for me to diversify the content of the show. So uh, we mainly focus on battle reports, but there's some other content and I wanted to shake it up a little bit and add a bit more. And I don't think anything anyone else out there is doing uh, something like this or people might be doing things similar, but um, I'm certainly gonna be doing something a little bit different in this show. It'll also give you guys something different to listen to while you're painting away, or at least you can uh, stare at some pretty looking models or models that I hope are pretty looking. Hey, that's supposed to happen. These things are uh, magnetized. Let's talk about that straight away, actually. These guns on these uh, Cataphron destroyers, you can easily swap them out for the plasma. They're not even magnetized. Actually. You shove it in, take that off, shove the, mag uh, shove the plasma in there. I like these models. I've got nine Cataphron destroyers now and six Cataphron breaches, and I will be getting more. They are tasty. So that's what Deployment Zone is all about, almost like a podcast, almost like a Tactica series. Uh, but before we get too far into it, I want to talk a bit more about the history of the show because I've been thinking about doing this for a while and there's a legend who stalks the byways of the internet called Art Wagner who's been communicating with me on Facebook. Uh, he's big in Texas and he's an awesome painter, much better than me. And I told him about Deployment Zone. I told him about... Um, uh, what I was thinking of doing, some of the changes are on the channel that are coming up in the future and he said that's a really great idea after you stick every single unit up there and bang on about it for a while you should then uh, put them up against a tactical squad or something and see how well they do and that's why I painted up these fellas badly this is the dummy squad this is a 200 point tactical squad uh, 10 Tactical Marines, 140 points, Veteran Sergeant with a Fist, Last Cannon Flamer, bang on 200 points because it's a nice round figure. And no matter what I paint, no matter what will be appearing in Deployment Zone, they'll be going up against this dummy squad. And uh, this guy, I think I'm calling him Sergeant Slap because he should be coming along and slapping things down with his Power Fist or blasting people with his Last Cannon. But uh, I'm throwing this out to the community. Uh, Dummy Squad is a pretty generic name. What do you think I should be calling this squad? And should we give Sergeant Slap another name or do you like Sergeant Slap? I don't know. So at the end of every deployment zone show, these guys will be facing what I paint. No matter what I paint, no matter what appears in deployment zone, be it a Warlord Titan, no, that's not coming anytime soon, or something nice and simple like a Land Speeder. I've got 12 of these things to paint. Or a Vindicator? How will a Tactical Squad do against a Vindicator? Uh, much better than they'll do against a Line Breaker Squadron. These guys have been sitting in my box for a decade now. I really should paint them up. They're tasty in the new uh, in the new Space Marine Codex. Or how about putting the Dummy Squad up against a Spartan Assault Tank? I've got a game versus Geeks 40k, 10,000 point apocalypse game coming up in June at Warhammer World. I'm painting this bad boy up for them. The dummy squad are definitely going up against this. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece of work. So thanks for your suggestion, Art Wagner. You can see that I took it 100% literally. Um, I think it's a great idea to see, uh, uh, to use these guys as a litmus versus new units that will be hitting the deployment zone in the future to see how well or badly they do. And to be honest, I think I'm gonna get a little bit attached to these, uh, to these buggers, watching them get blown apart by Imperial Night Titans or um, Win the Day versus a uh, one-shot LAS cannon on a, on a Spartan assault tank and blowing it up with one hit. It would be a glorious thing. To counteract the crapness of these guys, I needed a nice striking image to head up the show. So hence this. How awesome is that? That was painted by Anton Magdalene. I hope you got, got your name right, Anton. I'll put a link in the description below and he's an artist of some renown. 
who said uh, to me one day, got in contact with me on Facebook one day and said, can I paint something for you? And I said yes, and then he came up with stuff like that, and wow. So that's now the new header for Deployment Zone. So that's what the new show is all about. It's a way of connecting with you guys in a slightly different way. It's a way of showing you some of the new units that will be hitting some of the bat reps in the future. And it's a way of uh, uh, presenting some tactical thoughts behind some of these units. So if those, are, if those of you are out, who are out there who are thinking about getting some Cataphron Destroyers, I'll talk to you about the pros and cons of this particular unit. And those of you who are thinking about getting some of the other units that appear on the show, um, it's a way of you dipping in once the library builds up and there's six, seven, eight, nine of these things and I, I feature a Thunderfire Cannon or I feature a uh, unit of Grav Centurions for example and you want to get my thoughts on them then it's a way of you dipping in and, and seeing what I think are the pros and cons of these particular units and by all means please give me your feedback and your thoughts on uh, what you think I missed out or what you, uh, if, you, if you disagree with some of the thoughts that I, I have. And I'm going to try, and I say try, to shoot this video in a slightly different way to how I shoot other videos. When you see my tutorials and reviews, I edit quite a bit here or there. And the editing process is there to cut out all the pauses and the repetitions to try and present as concise a... Uh, See, a, uh, um, uh, trying to cut out all that sort of stuff and try and make it as concise and snappy and as interesting as I possibly can. And I'm going to try and shoot these videos with less edits in so um, my full stream of consciousness comes out. Um, I don't know how successful this will be, but we'll give it a go. Anyway, let's start. So in the Colt Mechanicus Codex, a unit of Cataphron Destroyers will cost you 165 points. You can add nine more. Uh, 55 points of pop and that'll give you a 660 point unit and you're never ever gonna do that Keep these guys in units of three maybe six sometimes because a unit of three is a magic number You never go below 25% casualties two of these guys die That's at 33% casualties. He will still regroup on full leadership You get four of these guys in a unit or more then you're gonna need snake eyes when one chap is left so three really is the magic number. Tau Crisis suits have been doing it for a very long time. And um, what does 165 points get you? It gets you um, toughness five, two wound, four plus save models, and they come with the grav cannons or the heavy plasma thingy bobs. These plasma culverns are essentially two shot plasma cannons at 24 inch range, so that's six plasma cannon shot, strength 7, AP2 at 24 inch range, they get hot, so that's 6 get hot shots, uh, or you can come with, or you can swap them out for heavy grav cannons, and um, that's free to swap them out, it's one or the other, and the heavy grav cannons are grav, 30 inch range, 6 shots. They also have these phosphor blasters on, they're strength 5, AP4, rapid fire, 24 inch range, and they've got the Lumogen special rule, which means if it, you shoot these first, essentially, and so that'll be six shots at 12 inch range, or uh, three shots at 24 inch range, and if you score a wound on the unit that you're shooting at, that unit has a minus one cover save, and also you any friendly units that charge it, get to re-roll their charge range, so typically you're firing these guys first, and then the big guns second. No, they're not monstrous creatures, but they can still fire two guns. They have a rule called heavy battle servitors, which means they can always fire the two guns, and they can charge even if they fire rapid fire guns, or heavy or salvo weapons like these, um, so they can charge after shooting, but they can never run. Let's face it, most of the time you're not going to be using these plasma culverns on them. They're very easy to switch over the guns. These, these guns are here for anti-horde. They're there. Grav affects your armor value, right? So if you're fighting demons, or if you're fighting guard, or if you're fighting anyone with a low armor save, mainly horde armies like orcs, you're going to load up these guns on them. But most of the time, you're going to have the uh, heavy grav cannons on them. And that's six shots, two shots at uh, 12 inch range, eight shots at 12 inches. Um, and seven shots at 24 inches. Uh, so they chuck out a crap ton of firepower and they're one of my favorite units from that particular codex. As for the non-shooty details, well these guys are initiative three with one attack at weapon skill three, strength five, so you never want to get them locked up in close combat. You want to keep them back and you want to 
utilize all these lovely shots they have as much as possible so plasma coverns let's face it i've never used them in any battle reports and i can't remember a time when i've used them yet this is 18 grab shots at 30 inch range you're going to be using these most of the time and in this game of um for more than 40k uh game where there's lots of high toughness monstrous creatures running around all over the place grav is the answer and in a game where which is dominated by uh, Space Marines or Grey Knights or even Eldar uh, with lots of 3 plus save Wraith Lords and Wraith Knights. Uh, Grav is, is the best way to go. 18 shots at 30 inch range means they chuck out more firepower at longer range than Grav Centurions which are 15 shots at 20, uh, 24 inch range. But are they better than Grav Centurions? These are 165 points. These are 240 points loaded out without the Omni Specs. Um, but they're not as good as Grav Centurions. Grav Centurions have Grav Amps. These guys hit on uh, fours, uh, threes, sorry, they've got Blister Skill 4, so they hit on threes. 15 shots hitting on threes means you're hitting 12 times. And with the Grav Amps, means you're re rolling any wounds and uh, immobilize results on the uh, vehicle damage table. These guys have got a ballistic skill of three, so they're hitting on fours. Those 18 shots, they're hitting nine times. These guys are hitting uh, 12 times, I believe the math. Someone tell me the math if it's wrong. And they're re-rolling the wounds. And these guys are hitting nine times and they're not re-rolling the wounds. But you do get a benediction of the Omniscience, I believe it's called. Just checking the rule book. Yes, I'm right. That's one of the canticles of the Omnissile, which increases your uh, chances to hit. So if you've got a unit of, if there's one to three um, uh, Cop Mechanicus units on the table, they re-roll ones. If there's four to seven, you re-roll ones or twos when shooting. And if there's eight plus units, you re-roll all shots. It's kind of like prescience if you've got eight plus units. And with the Divine Chorus rule for the um, Cop of Cult Mechanicus, you can do that twice so these guys can essentially twin link their guns or reroll ones and twos to hit twice in a game. But these guys typically have Tigarius with them, Tigarus, Tiggy, Tiggy, or Ultramarines Chapter Tactics or some other buff which allows them to uh, reroll hits. But that's even more pricey, that's even more points. These guys are cheaper. But re-roll and wounds, I've found honestly, 165 points are good, 18 shots that inch range are good, but I've found Grav Centurions are more killy. But let's rewind a bit more. Two units of these, it's the same points cost thereabouts as three units of these, and three units of these is a bit more killy than two units of these. And let's not forget that while these guys are toughness five, they have a four plus save, these guys are toughness five, they have a two plus save. These guys can't fire overwatch. These guys can fire overwatch, and that's 24 overwatch shots if uh, they're still alive when you charge a unit of these. Um, so, longer range uh, grav rounds with less resilience, shorter range grav rounds which are more reliable, but also more resilient. So I think points for points, 165 versus 240, they got it just about right. Uh, certainly through my experience of playing the games with these guys, they've got it just about right. And I must say, as I said before, I've got three units of these, I've got nine of them, and I will be getting more. I can see some very strong lists out there where you have, say, six units of three of these chaps charging up the battlefield, or not charging, because they can't run, but, uh, Six units of these guys is an awful lot of firepower and an awful lot of range with an awful lot of grav. Grav is very, very good versus vehicles. I know a lot of people say, no, nah, what about your pen? What about, you're immobilizing jinking wave serpents. You're immobilizing jinking um, other light skims. You're immobilizing Flyers is a good one. You immobilize a flyer on a one two, it crashes and burns, and on the three, four, five, six, it flies forward in a straight line. If it can't be placed, it gets removed from play, it crashes and burns. Immobilize, uh, uh, immobilize results on most vehicles is quite good. So if you play with Imperial forces and you want a lot of grab in your army, you can go with Grav Centurions or you can go with the Destroyers. 
Uh, Grav Centurion's a bit more pricey. Grav Centurion chuck out more shots, but uh, with mechanicals, they can get quite beefy. They're not as resilient. How do you make him a bit more resilient? You chuck your Dominus in front of him, your Tech Priest Dominus. All of a sudden, all the shots coming in go on the closest model. This chap has a 2 plus A, 5 plus invulnerable, 5 plus feel no pain, and anything strength 8 or higher that potentially could insta give him you start looking out sir, here, there and everywhere. So putting one of these in front of your destroyers helps tank them, uh, helps tank a lot of shots and helps keep the unit behind alive that much longer. So your Tech Priest Dominus becomes a force multiplier, a way of keeping one unit of destroyers alive that much longer. I say one unit because you can only get one Tech Priest Dominus per Cult Mechanicus Battle Congregation, only one HQ slot. If you want to do this again and again and again, you're going to get, need multiple Battle Congregations. But talking about Force Multipliers, you can chuck these guys in a pot and put a Librarian with them. Put a Librarian with Prescience and Terminator Armor. All of a sudden, you can uh, start tanking them with a 2 plus save, uh, 5 plus in Van give your um, uh, librarian uh, a shield and suddenly you've got a three plus in van and roll for perfect timing on the divination discipline. And just like Targaryus, you could start twin linking, ignoring cover, those grab rounds every single turn after these guys come charging out of a pod. Let's face it, that's the favorite way the internet uh, likes to play grab centurions. And you can do the same thing with these guys. They're battle brothers with Imperial forces, so why not have two of these units coming out of pods with two librarians attached, rolling for perfect timing, rolling for prescience. All of a sudden, you've got a, a very, very strong force multiplied units with a, a lot of mobility. They can appear where you want them to on the table. And you don't have to chuck, chuck, chuck them too close up the table, in, in all honesty. You don't really need to put them in drop pods because of the 30 inch range. You can um, chug them along at the back, shooting away. As an aside, I can say that you can swap these out for Cognus Flamers, which have exactly the same t um, uh, stats as a Flamer Strength 4, AP 5, but they've got the Cognus Special Rule, so when you charge, they always get the highest number of Wall of Death. So you roll D3 for Wall of Death, right, when you charge a unit, and on a 5 6, it's 3 hits. Well, Cognus Flamers always get the three hits, so if you gave three Flamers to these guys, that would be nine hits uh, uh, when you charge in there. But why would you do that? Um, you want to keep the Phosphor Serpenters on there because you want to try and get that magic hit, that magic wound, which means when you hit stuff with Grav, it's got a, um, a reduced cover save, and also the Flamers cost five points of pop. Suddenly the unit goes up from 165 points to 170, 180 points. Um, I haven't stuck any of the flamers on. I haven't magnetized these guys. Um, keep them cheap and keep them with um, uh, as much firepower on them as you can. So that's it, Cat from Destroyers are tough and they're very scary. They throw down a lot of firepower at a very long range. If you're considering getting a unit of these guys, get two or three or four units of these guys. Um, I believe they're one of the strongest units in the uh, Adeptus Mechanicus army, probably the strongest unit in the Adeptus Mechanicus army. They're not as uh, resilient as you want them to be. That four plus save is a right pain in the ass uh, sometimes. Um, when they die, uh, they die, they start falling off a cliff quite quickly. Um, but uh, hopefully you should be by taking big chunks out of your opponent's army, or at least uh, pressurizing your opponent's army. Wraith Knights don't want to go anywhere near them. Dread Knights don't want to go anywhere near them. Monstrous creatures uh, do not like them. Um, Riptides, Storm Surges, anything like that. Particularly if you have four of these units, you can, you can easily dominate. They make a great allied slot as well. Uh, my friends don't like me bringing them. You don't see these guys in Space Marine battle reports with the 13th very much because uh, you can easily dirty up a list quite quickly by adding this much grav and chucking in a few librarians. Okay guys, now it's fight time. How are the destroyers going to do against the dummy squad? So without using any canticles, without using any bonuses, let's just roll up for the Phosphor Serpent straight away. 
hit in on fours. That's three hits. Wounded on threes. Two wounds. Two saves to make. And that's one dead space marine. 18 grav shots hitting on fours. Uh, that looks good. That was slightly above average. 10 hits, killing on threes now. Ouch. Yeah, that's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, two guys left. Uh, return fire, hit on threes with a bolt gun. Wounded on fives, no wounds. Laz cannon, of course it misses. And then these guys fire and everybody's dead. Yeah, so let's do that slightly differently. And I understand that I'm doing this entirely in a vacuum. There's no canticles of the Omnisars, no Space Marine chapter tactics. Never going to use Space Marine chapter tactics on these. They're just a litmus just to see what this unit can do. But anyway, let's see what happens when they fire. I'll charge them in a minute, but let's see what happens when they fire. Um, we've got the Flamer, nice teardrop there. And it's going to wound on fives. So that's one wound. And it gets a four plus save. And he saves. And then bolt of fire. That's a lot of bolts. One minute, let me count some dice. 18 bolter shots hitting on threes. Uh, pick up these ones and then wound in on fives. You know, fives. See, that's a few wounds. Three wounds, four plus save. They kill one, one's dead. And then the last cannon misses again. Brilliant. Destroyers fire back. Let's see if the dummies can stand it this time. Uh, this is the Phosphor Serpenters, two hits, uh, two wounds, two three plus saves, and the Flamer guy is gone, and now we've got 12 grav shots coming back at them. Hang in there boys, you can do it. 12 grav rounds, hitting on fours. He's now, ouch. Alright, I killed seven of them. Now I've got these guys fighting back. Bolt gun fire, two hits, wounded on fives. No wounds, Laz Cannon. Come on, third time lucky. Ah, oh dear, that lucky Laz Cannon, eh? You are a terrible shot. And then the destroyers open up and kill them again. So I think we can see that this 165 point unit versus this 200 point tactical squad, in most cases, the destroyers will win the shooting match. Um, now, these guys are never going to assault them because they're initiative three, one attack strength five, but these chaps might assault them. So let's do that, eh? But before we assault, Flamer at the ready, pistol shots coming up. So Flamer can hit all three again, wounded on fives, nothing. And then nine pistol shots. Okay, nine pistol shots hitting on threes. Eh, that's statistically average, shall we say. These are wounded on fives. One wound. Okay, one four up save. Yeah, they're still alive. So then they charge. Charge range is 11. We're in, boys, we're in. All right, there's no characters in Destroyer, so no challenges to make. And I've got 18 dice here, because of course the sergeant with his fist, Sergeant Slap, will go last. So these guys will hit on threes, tacticals. And that's a pretty good roll. That was 15 hits. The dummy squad will wound on fives. And that's a pretty good roll, is it? Let's have a look. Six wounds, six four up saves. Look at that, one, two are dead. Two are entirely dead. Then Sergeant Slap goes last. Veteran Sergeant with a fist on the charge. Hit in on threes. Murdering on twos. Yeah, the dummy squad took them entirely out before they got to strike in close combat. Well done, chaps. Your first victory. Even though the last cannon can't hit anything. Still hasn't shot. Still hasn't hit. Back to target school for you. So there you have it. When it comes to shooting stuff, victory goes to the Cataphon Destroyers. Even if they take a Salvo first and lose one of their number. But in Assault, they suck. And uh, Tactical Marines can munch through them quite easily. Don't let them get tied up in close combat. So that was the very first deployment zone. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, this will become a thing for a bit, um, just like Matt from Mini Wargaming uh, says, you've got to throw spaghetti on the wall, huh? And if it sticks, if you guys like this, then I'll churn out a, a, a more and more of these. Um, they will be infrequent, as and when I get stuff painted, it will pop up so I can see one of these coming up every couple of weeks, 
and then there might be a period of four to six to eight weeks when you don't see any of these and of course if they suck and they don't get any views at all and the spaghetti falls off the wall then I won't be making many many more of these but uh, it's an idea uh, it's a way of uh, reaching out and saying hello and um, thank you for watching happy wargaming